Gerard, what was, uh, what was it like growing up in France? Can you tell us a bit of your experience? Because I know it's very, very interesting. It was exciting. <laughs> you know? uh, exciting and actually a bit sad. I mean, I was born prematurely at seven months. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> at home, no midwives, no doctors. Actually, it was during the war. Uh, it was in 1943. And I was born in the south of France, Nice, which is, it's spelled nice, it's pronounced nice in English. It's Nice. And actually the Germans were there already, the Gestapo, and um, my father was a free French, which is a resistance fighter. Yes. And he would go and fight and come home for lunch. Sometimes there was no food, so they would eat cats and rats, you know. The French can make a delicacy with everything. <laughs> <coughs> Anyway, but things were really tough. I'm making light of a sad situation. Sure. And, uh, uh, my mother was wondering if she should keep me because there was nobody there. I was sickly looking. Uh, but finally, a midwife showed up, and uh, there was no incubator, so my mom, my mom made some a little incubator, incubator with cotton, kept me warm, and I survived. Miracle. And, uh, and basically, and then I, uh, the war was over, uh, my godfather said, had bought a villa in the black market during the war and said, why don't you move up there? You don't have to pay rent. We had no money and here we are living in this huge villa that actually the Germans used as their headquarters, the Gestapo. Oh, for heaven's sake. German books, German pictures. You couldn't live on the third floor because of shells. Wow. And we p were playing in the garden one day with my sister and we found a shell, huge shell like that, which was not spent, right? Very dangerous. Oh, well. I would say. And uh, so, but it was, it was fun, Phil. You know, kids don't care, right? Uh, being on the French Riviera in the south of France, I mean, uh, Churchill used to come there to paint. He was a fantastic painter. Yes, he was. And Queen Victoria actually used to spend summer there. She had a beautiful palace in this huge. And the Russian czars used to come by train to go to Monte Carlo. So it was an exciting area to grow up in. And then you came to Canada, and how did that happen? Well, we came to Canada. We were supposed to go to Boston. My grandmother had remarried. Her husband had died. She remarried to a gentleman that lived in Boston. Right. So she said, you got to come over here. Because my parents did not have the right paper that were lost during the war, they couldn't go to Boston, so we came to Canada. At that time, Canada took a lot of people, and they needed people. My father was a master tailor. Like in France, he was doing suits for movie stars and rich people and all that. So, um, so they said, yeah, you know, there was no problem getting the paper. So uh, we took the ship, and instead of going to Boston, we came to Quebec City, Montreal, and Toronto. And that was the last voyage of the Franconia, Cunard Line. Oh, no. We did stop in the middle of the Atlantic. There were icebergs. <laughs> I guess the captain didn't want to know the Titanic. <laughs> oh, my God. So you guess you were coming around the spring, were you, when all the icebergs oh, were yeah, coming down? Oh, yeah, but it's gorgeous to see these things. <coughs> yeah, they're so gorgeous. I've had an opportunity to see that. So you arrived, and when, when you landed into Canada, which was your first port? Was oh, it? we landed in Quebec City. In Quebec oh, City. beautiful. Look at that. They speak French. <laughs> Friendly people. The French were not quite like ours, the accent. This is wonderful. We're going to love it here. Except our home was not going to be Quebec City. <laughs> we took the train to Montreal. Oh, I think it's French, but it uh, can't quite understand it. But it is French. It didn't sound as good as Quebec City. But like... Anything uh, in life, especially with um, immigration back at that time, nothing was given to you? No, nothing. It was difficult. And, you know, so you arrived in Quebec City. What happened at that point? Did your father uh, and your parents moved or lived in Quebec and then moved on? No, we just took the train, came to Montreal and Toronto. And then Toronto. Yeah. And we had to find a flat. I remember it was $75 a month. Yeah. <clears throat> and we had to move out soon after that because the, the, our landlord was Italian, didn't know, quite know the rules. He said, my family is coming over from Italy, right. and I need the flat. So we had to move out, and we moved to Davisville, and uh, went to school there, and uh, voila. It, 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 these were tough times all for sure. all the immigrants, you know. Very different today, but the same oh, yeah. situation. Yeah, very, very different, different today. I mean, the government helps you a lot more today. Sure. You know. 